All right, uh, my name is Aaron Rhodes, and you're listening to the Shuttlecock Podcast. We're sponsored by the Vinyl Underground at 7th Heaven, offering new and used vinyl at 76 and Troost in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, my computer is making noise <laughs> now, but that's <laughs> all right. Uh, this week on the show, we have Chloe Jacobson. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm great. Uh, we just had to restart the recording, but, <laughs> you know, we're only a few minutes in, so it's all good. It's We chill. were talking about uh, your first concert which was a 303 show yeah it was very cool 303 which i cannot confirm but i'm pretty sure was opened by of mice and men um because i'm pretty sure that they're from san jose mm. there was like a rumor that oh that house is austin carlisle's house but i never saw him coming in and out of it so it was probably not true and it was at a roller rink was anyone skating <laughs> during the show <laughs> no but there was definitely skating before actually maybe there was I don't know. I was in like eighth grade. Mm. It was such a long time ago. Right. I can't and you, you said that was around when you were 16, right before you moved to Kansas City? Um, yeah, I moved to Kansas City when I was uh, right before my 16th birthday. Cool. Um, but yeah. We're also discussing uh, your poetry that you were doing as a teenager. And mm-hmm. every once in a while you would kind of submit it and do it through like school and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I took... Um, writing like I wrote a lot of short stories and um poetry and I took it like real real serious um I used to think that that's something I would want to do which maybe I still will but I haven't I haven't uh really practiced that in that way in a long time a lot of it's kind of just kind of gone into your songs since you started your music yeah I would say so Mm. And so, so what made you want to pick up, like, guitar and singing and stuff, like, once when you were still a teenager? Um, that's a good question. It's kind of hard for me to remember. I used to feel really, really embarrassed about singing in front of other people, and then that just, like, changed, and then I loved it. I don't really know what happened there. It, I Maybe that was, like, right around the time before I moved here, but um, I didn't want to make a lot of noise. <laughs> I didn't want to be loud, um, but I really started getting into um, like writing music and playing it um, a couple years after I lived here. I took a music production class in high school at this like small local recording studio. That was like a really cool experience, um, and so I learned how to record. And I started writing in groups with other people, and then I realized, oh, I really like this. So it just kind of went from there. And so you, you kind of mentioned that you're into some of like the scene music and stuff as a teenager. But like, was there anything that really inspired you early on when you were first like writing your own songs and stuff? Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, this is—I don't know if this is contradictory or not, but I loved Adele more than anything especially when I was in like junior high, when the album 19 came out, um, was obsessed with it and with her, just with the way that she wrote too. Um, and I loved Amy Winehouse. Like those were like my, like my foundation of like, um, songwriters that I found really inspiring and Feist. I still really love Feist. Is she British too? You have just a thing for British (laughs) songwriters. She's Canadian. Canadian. Um, but close. I mean, I'm pretty sure they aren't, aren't they under the queen at some level. Yeah, probably. I mean, I think they are. Something to do with the flag or <laughs> but, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I loved Feist, and I listened to like a lot of. Um, I don't even know what kind of music to call it. Like easy listening, <laughs> mm. <laughs> like Elton John. Mm. He's my number one. Yeah, it's kind of more easygoing pop music and yeah, stuff Yeah, just, like that. I guess, like, really, like, uh, classic pop music, like, music that's been in a lot of movies, I think that that's what it kind of is for me. Like, it feels, like, music that feels, like, really emotional and cinematic and, I guess, also commercial just made me want to be a part of that, I guess. I don't know. So, I haven't seen it yet, but that makes me think, like, did you, did you, have you seen A Star is Born or any of that stuff? I haven't seen that movie. But the thing is, is I don't really like musicals. Is that a musical? I don't think it's a musical. I think it's just a movie that involves a lot of music. Yeah. Do you remember the Do you remember the movie uh, Begin Again? No. That was with like Keira Knightley, I think. Also probably Bradley Cooper, I'm pretty sure. But I usually don't like movies like that, but I do really want to see A Star is Born. Mm. Do, you, do you still have, like, do you, 
I'm guessing you did at that point at least, but do you still hope to like have your music in movies and stuff or is that less important to you now? Um, that is like my absolute dream. If I could achieve that, I would feel incredible. I think if I could score a film, I'm not like advanced enough of a musician, I think to be able to compose like an entire score that would be like, that would probably kill me. (laughs) But if I could, if I could be involved in like writing music for a film of, of any sort, I would Mm -hmm. be stoked. It would be awesome. Nice. And, um, but I, okay. So I, I hadn't seen you live until like a week or two ago, but i I feel like I've seen your name on shows just for like a really long time already. Mm-hmm. Like when, when did you first start like playing shows? Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, uh, I think it's been about two years. Mm-hmm. I think one of the first shows that I played like out here was in December 2016. But I also, I did like house shows a few times before that, but. Were were you already, you mentioned that like you were kind of uncomfortable like singing and performing like when you were first starting, like were you already over that by the time you started doing those shows or was that still kind of a struggle at that point? I think I just, I think I was pretty much over it at that point. I just don't know where like the embarrassment went, but it just left me, which is nice. Glad I don't have to, I mean, I do, I do get nervous sometimes, you know, like you can't stop like your hand from shaking and you're like, I don't know why my brain's doing that. Cause I don't feel like emotionally nervous, but can't put my leg on the floor for some reason. So <laughs> yeah. So that still does happen sometimes, but, um, I think I, I think I thoroughly enjoy it and I like doing it. <laughs> what, what were some of those first shows kind of like, well, like what spots were you at and like, who are you playing with and that type of stuff? Yeah, um, the first, the one that I'm thinking of in December 2016 was with Crystal Rose, um, who's an amazing local artist. Her music is like, uh, I think it would be classified as pop music, but she does like a lot of cool stuff with like, um, like live, like she'll bring in like a big upright bass and stuff like that. Like it's, she's super creative. Um, so I did that show with her. It was at this like really random bar that was actually a really cool space, but it was like in power and light, like on like a side street, like off somewhere. I don't even remember what it was called, Mm -hmm. but, um, after that I played a so far sounds show, um, at a yoga place. (laughs) That was one of the first ones I did where I felt like, um, Maybe I can start getting into like the circuit a little bit more now. I don't remember when that was. It was probably just like a couple months after that. Mm. Oh yeah, and it kind of seems like you do have like you are pretty well acquainted with like a lot of people who like book shows and like other local musicians. Were you like were you were you worried at all at first about like finding people to like put you on shows and stuff? For sure, for sure. I remember when I was still um, the studio that I did the internship at I stayed um or I did the class in high school at I stayed and did an internship for like a few years after I graduated and like no one there really played out at all like there were other artists there but no one was really like booking anything because they just weren't trying so I was just kind of like where do I start like how do I meet people where do people even play like how does this all work out? So I think I was like, I didn't really see like an avenue into it. Um, but just over time it kind of came about like you meet certain people and make friends and whatnot. So it, it happened eventually. No, it seems kind of weird because like, I think every once in a while I will hear about like, I don't know, there is just sometimes like a weird disconnect between like studio musicians locally and like Mm -hmm. bands that you see playing at like, and at the bar like every other weekend and right, right. kind of be weird to bridge the two at some point, like if you're in one, but I want to get more into the other, but yeah, it's kind of like the two sides of the coin. Um, it just made me think, uh, like the crucial person, one of the crucial people that I met that helped me like get connected to like a lot more people that were doing things, um, was when I interned for like a year at this company called do 816 
which they do like um like event listings and they do like a lot of like shows and stuff mm. just like listing it on their website and um Stephen Herve worked there at the time and he like knows everybody everywhere and he really helped me get I think he he's the one that helped me get the so far show and so kind of just took off from there yeah he's a, he's a good person no he's great um so you ended up dropping like your first kind of formal single in 2017 national news mm-hmm. And I don't know, I feel like I did see that song pop up, like, at least a few places. Like, I know uh, Mark Manning's played it on his show a few times, I think, and you've, awesome. you've guessed it in there. But were, were you kind of happy with the reception it got and, like, where, where you were at at that point? Yeah, um, that song, actually, I, I put it on Apple Music and Spotify, um, at that time that you said, but it was on SoundCloud for like a year before that. So okay. that song's actually super old, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I was like really encouraged and appreciated like the support that I got. I have really great friends that always made me feel good about it. Um, but yeah, so far I think I'm pretty happy with how it's going. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and so I read, I think it was, like, a GoFundMe page you had for <laughs> the album recording and yeah. everything, and you, you mentioned, like, you had been working on these songs, like, some of them for, like, four to five years mm-hmm. before, like, it was released. Like, did you kind of, like, dread that process at all or, like, just want to, like, you know, release a bunch of, like, home recordings right away and just get it over with? Like, I, I think most people don't work on, like, an album for that long. Yeah, I definitely thought about that. Well, I just went, like, huge stretches of time with just doing nothing with them. Um, And then I, it was, like, this time last year, I was like, they just all need to be in one place at the same time so I can move on from them. (laughs) Um, Yeah, the, some of them really are that old. But I'm glad that I, I'm glad that it happened now and not earlier. Um, because I think I had a clear picture of what I wanted to do with them now. And I, I feel like I sometimes have like, I make things that don't really feel like they're anything like each other. And it just like, I didn't really like that before. And then I decided to embrace it. Like there's, those tracks are kind of like all over the place. Um, so I don't think I would have made the choices like a year or two years ago that I made this fall when I like put the track list together. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that I did it that way. And uh, I know Daniel Gum worked on some of the recordings mm-hmm. with you on there. Like was the rest of it just stuff you had self produced or? Um, a few. Yeah. Mm-hmm. National news was like a project that I worked on when I still work. I keep referencing the studio. It's called JTL group. Um, Mess actually recorded their EP there mm-hmm. or their, their full length. That's about to come out. Um, recently, but I worked on national news there for a few months. That was like the first song that I had like written and finished like while, while working there and was like, okay, I'm going to make like an actual demo of this and like challenge myself with like recording and mixing. Cause I'd been like observing other people do that and um, like kind of doing it myself here and there for like years at that point. So I was like, I'm just going to like dive into it. Um, so that took me a long, long ass time. But where was I going with that? I forgot. Uh, just the recording process kind of. Right, right, right. Okay. So that was like the first one that I, I had like a, like production ideas from like start to finish. And then there's, um, I got like a little help with the mixing on the back end, but from, for the most part, I did that one totally by myself and the song needle nose was like the first, uh, like drum machine production that I tried to do. And I, it, it's just been sitting in my Dropbox for years. Like, I think I made that in like 2015 or 14, like it's pretty old and I used to listen to it and just hear all these like flaws that I didn't like, 
but when I was putting like the track list together for the album, I listened to it again and I thought it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> so I was like, that has to go on the album. Mm. Um, I like, I mean, I like, I like the song. I don't th- like, I don't, I'm not saying I think it's bad, but um, it literally just made me laugh. So I put it on there. Mm. Um, and so is that one like all instrumental also, or is I, I forget if there's any. It's like all MIDI instruments. Mm. There's, there's like no like folky guitar girl vibe on that one, mm. which some of the rest of my music has on it. But oh, yeah, that, that was something I was going to ask because like most of the songs are just like vocals and guitar. So like, what was that kind of just a conscious decision you made going into it that you didn't want to have like bass or drums or any of that type of stuff on most of the songs? Um, yeah. Um, I wanted them to be pretty pulled back for the most part, like really simple and kind of bare. Um, I also don't have like a band put together. So I think maybe I was just thinking like when I play shows, I don't want it to hear like a rip off of what the songs sound like recorded because like I don't have a person to play like other instruments consistently. I don't know if that's a good enough reason, but <laughs> <laughs> it's your, your music. You can, you can do what you want. Do, but, but do you kind of hope to put together a band at some point or do you think you'll kind of wait like and do that like on a future album or mm-hmm. I think, I think, yeah, when I have like another full thing written, I think that I would pursue that. Mm. Um, for sure. That is something that I want. Like if I was ever able to tour, I would want to tour with a band. I don't think I'd want to tour by myself. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I, th- I think it kind of does serve as like a nice introduction to your music though, just because like your voice is so present on the songs and you can kind of like, there's less going on. And so it's easier to pay attention to the stuff that you wrote and all that. So, yeah, the, they're pretty like word heavy. So it doesn't like those songs, there's not really like room for other stuff like moving around. Um, I think that might, that might've been my reason why I just didn't feel like there was space. Mm. I didn't want them to feel crowded. Okay. And I also want to ask, like, some of them do kind of have, like, a almost like a grainy analog sound to them, too. Or mm-hmm. So was that, like, were you working with, like, any analog gear, or was that just kind of post stuff? Um, technically, yeah, I think that would be considered in post because we, we mixed all of the tracks through, um, like, a four-track cassette recorder because I initially wanted to record them all onto cassette. Like, I wanted to do all of the recording onto cassette because Feist did demos on a four-track, so I wanted to do it like her. <laughs> and, like, a lot of musicians that I really love and look up to did that. Like, Elliot Smith did that a lot with, like, the double tracking, like, with the vocals and guitar doing, like, the exact same take. So, and Daniel Gum also loves Elliot Smith, so that's what we initially bonded over. Um, but... <laughs> That just ended up not being the route that we took, but we did mix through it, um, like, after the songs were finished before we sent them over to mastering. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, um, what else did I have? So, yes, as far as, like, the lyrics go on the album, like, a lot of them are kind of just the... Like, I really like how some of them are kind of, like, just these vignettes of, like, different, like, situations and people... I like that That word. you know. Yeah. yeah. And so, I don't know, like, some of them are kind of, like, I think there are, like, a couple, like, love songs on there, and, like, there's one kind of, like, maybe, like, a heartbreak m- moment, too. I'm not sure which one talking I'm about thinking Swan of. Dive. Maybe, yeah. I think that's the one you're talking about. Uh, so, those are kind of, like, self-evident in, in a way, but, like, I don't know, it was... I was kind of wondering what some of the other, like, themes and, like, ideas went into, like, the other songs on the album and, like, what kind of stuff you were thinking about a lot when you were writing. Yeah. it's a good question. Um, I think I was trying to tell, like, different individual stories. Um... And I should say there is one cover on there. The song Lover's Rock is a TV girl cover, mm. which is a band 
that I really, really like. And I DM'd them on Twitter and asked if I could cover their song, and they're like, sure, we don't care. <laughs> um, so I got permission. And that was also on, like, a little covers EP you had on SoundCloud, mm-hmm. too? Yeah, yeah, yep. And that is a voice memo on my phone. So, like, when things are all over the place, they really are. Like, there's some that are literally just that. Mm. Um, but as far as, like, themes for the whole album goes, I think I was just, I just, I was just trying to, like, nail my perceptions of, like, different kind of people that I've met. Like, this, I've had a lot of, I've like, different family members have asked me if the song Library is about them. <laughs> Because it's, that one is like clearly about one, one person or at least one kind of person. Mm. Um, so that's not, that song's not just about like one like lady that I met. Yeah, it's kind um, of a composite of. Yeah. 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 So I think I'm just trying to like uh, compose different images or scenes that I experienced or that I imagined that moved me. Um trying to like think of other tracks and, and true blue is kind of like a song about a friend or like or like yeah. you know true maybe several friends into one yeah true blue that song is just actually pretty literal um i wrote that when i was like 18 i f- don't i f- felt like i hadn't really come into my own in a lot of ways then and i'm still pretty young i'm only 23 now but um yeah, that song is just like really honest. And so it actually, if I really listen to what I'm saying, it like really embarrasses me when I hear it playing around like other people. Like if I'm at like my friend's shop and they're like, they turn it on to be cute. I'm like, oh God, please no, <laughs> please no. Um, but they're all, I mean, so I'm, I'm being like serious about like the way that I'm talking about things when I write, but I also... I'm I'm kind of like I'm trying to, you know, pinpoint this one concept or type of person and then also kind of like make fun of it. Um I think that's the best way I can Some of it's like kind of tongue in cheek. Mm. It's not all like dead ass serious. Yeah. But uh, I was also kind of curious like I I had never read or like um well I I what what would you say about the album title? Because I haven't seen any of that, like, written anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, another good question. It's, by, it's called a Frozen Fruit, by the way, if mm-hmm. we did not mention that. Yeah, Frozen Fruit. I, I'd like a lot of album titles that I was kind of throwing around, and um, I'm a really literal person a lot of the times I literally do just like eat a lot of frozen fruit my like one of my favorite snacks are the dark sweet frozen cherries from Trader Joe's um so I'm kind of making fun of myself by calling it that Mm. because often that's like a meal (laughs) for me um which which people are often as sweet as uh lyrical reference yeah Uh, sorry (laughs) um so and it's also because it's just kind of like an eclectic mix of songs like in the fact that they're all really different from each other it's like a medley and that's kind of a metaphor for you know and you feel like you just have like really differing parts of yourself and you don't know how to reconcile them it's kind of just like I guess embracing that instead um and I also I liked what kind of like images it made me think of. I just, just makes me think of like certain colors and textures. And I think that's why I was like, yes. I also like that it's two F's. Little things like that. There's no, there's no like big, deep underlying yeah. reason. I just, I ended up liking it and the different things that it made me think of. Oh, yeah. It's, it's always cool to like also find like you're mentioning it is kind of a literal thing you like, but also like, can be seen as like kind of a metaphor in mm-hmm. a way so it's, it's kind of cool finding those like items or ideas that you kind of identify with on more than one way yeah it's kind of like all these parts are one thing yeah yeah 
Oh yeah, and you're you're talking about like the colors and like images that it makes you think of, and I also like the album cover, and it was done by your friend Natalie Clinton. Yeah. 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 So, so what did you have like much of a conversation with her about like putting that together, or were you just like, this is the name, do your thing? Yeah, pretty much actually. Uh, we went to the art store together and like picked out the paint colors, and then we talked about like the palette that I wanted, and there were like little specific things that I wanted where I was like, I want this to be like a wash of like a neutral color and then have like little dots on top or something like small and like that. Um, and she, I think she, she took her time doing it. It took her like maybe like a month or two. Um, cause I think she went over it a lot and she would send me like progress photos and then it became what it was at the end and I was like I love this this is perfect so but the the and I should just say her name again her name's Natalie Clinton um she's an abstract painter and I'm like her biggest fan that's all no and yeah I thought it was cool that um like I don't know I'd never heard of like to explain to someone what you want is like kind of one thing but to go to the art store with (laughs) them and pick out like the paints and colors and stuff is pretty cool yeah, and she's also one of my best friends, so it was like a reason to hang out. Nice, but oh, and she's she also did one of the like the the mural outside of oddly correct. Now she did, too. Yeah, yeah. So if you're driving down Main Street, if you look over at oddly, you can see some of her work out there. It's pretty good. She also painted their tip jar. Nice. So if you go inside, you can check that out too. But she has like a uh, like a bunch of paintings. She's had like a couple showings mm. over the past couple of years. But yeah. Oh, yeah, and I was I was going to mention, like, it kind of doesn't make sense to say right now, but, like, you're, you're talking about how you're kind of glad you waited at least most of the time on putting the album out. And, like, I think it, it, like, it did probably work out really well just because, like, you'd had, like, a couple years to, like, kind of become part of, like, the local, like, live music scene. And so, like, I don't know, I think both the, like, I made it to the Kansas City release show, but, like, the lineups on the Lawrence show and the Kansas City show were really cool. And I know it was, it was a nice little vibe at the Mill show. For sure. I was so glad that everyone wanted to. Um, <clears throat> so, in the Kansas City release show, it was Daniel Gum. And um, he just put an EP out called the Moon EP. Or it's, there's no that. It's just Moon EP. That is beautiful and I listened to a bunch of times and then the other band that played was Budget Motel which was composed of just like a bunch of my really good friends and I also think their music is awesome um so yeah I was able to book that one just because I was friends with all those people and also they would be like my top choices for for wanting to book um and then the Lawrence show um Sean and Skyler at Manor Records helped me book but Lacey was amazing, and Iris was also absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah, and that was, Lacey is also in uh, Dream Girl. And yeah. Lacey, they're, yeah. I know, yeah, they're putting out, like, an EP pretty soon, and mm-hmm. they've been getting some good attention, so. Yeah, Dream Girl's about to leave for tour. They told me that uh, they sold out their L.A. show. Oh, wow. Which I was like, that's amazing, you guys. Go get it. <laughs> so shout out to them. Um, but yeah, and you you also mentioned on, like, one of your – posts leading up to the album that like you were hoping to tour at some point I know you're about to be out of the country for a few months so Mm. like do you think like you'll be putting together like tour plans and stuff when you get back or do you think is that kind of I don't I don't have like any immediate plans to when I come home um I am gonna have like a lot of free time while I'm gone um while I'm I'm gonna be in um you're up for a couple months for school. So I think I'll, I will definitely have a lot of free time. Um, so I'm hoping to actually work on a few things that I have started writing while I'm over there. And so maybe like when I have, it's kind of hard to know because the, by the time I get back, the album will have already been out for like six months. So it might be, I don't like, I literally don't know how some stuff like that works. Like, I don't know if it'd be weird to tour it then. Like if it'd be kind of too late, if I should wait till I have something else, like, finished and ready to go that might be in like 
three years down the line. I don't know. Um, I'd really like to. My dream is just for someone to ask me to open for their tour so I can just piggyback on all of their hard work. <laughs> that would be ideal. I think you've put in plenty of your <laughs> own, but that's always helpful. Um, but yeah, do you have any other like kind of immediate musical plans that you want to like so you you think you'll probably be writing while you're uh away but i'm hoping to yeah one of the airbnbs that i'm staying at has a upright piano in it and i haven't really gotten to write anything on piano in a long time because i don't have any access to one um so i'm gonna see what i can do with that maybe it'll have you have you been playing piano like as long as you've been like doing guitar and stuff or is that more recent? No, yeah. I probably can play them equally well. Um I started playing guitar when I was which I don't which is not like incredible. I can't not like shred on either instrument, but maybe I one day I will. I'm just going to speak that into existence. I will if I like actually practice, but I taught myself just like basic chords and some piano theory when I was in high school, but I started taking guitar lessons when I was in like third grade and it was just really spotty. I learned like classic Spanish guitar. I could play like one classic Spanish song and like happy birthday and a couple <laughs> other ones like that, like twinkle, twinkle, little star. That was, that's, that was my start. To, to whip out some like classic Spanish guitar at some point <laughs> could be pretty... <laughs> You're like right. you could catch some people off guard, I think. <laughs> no, if no they, one. If they don't hear this. Absolutely, no one is expecting that. I'm sure. Kind of sound check with that in your next show. Like, oh, wow, what, what is this? It's crazy. You have to walk up there with like a nylon string, <laughs> like little guy. That would be great. I should do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, is there any other like stuff that people should look out for from you or your friends or in general, Kansas City? Um, Budget Motel is about to drop their EP, mm. which I'm really excited for. Um, I don't have a great memory, so I thought they had already dropped it, and I went to go find it the other day to listen to, because it's like exactly what I wanted to listen to, and it wasn't up yet, and mm. I was pissed. But it should be out literally very soon. Budget Motel. That's good. Uh, Grandview emo band. Yeah. They're the best. Um... But you don't have any of your own shows scheduled right now since you'll be away for a while? I don't. I don't have every, have anything else scheduled. I think I'm going to play at my friend's wedding, Ooh. which does not count as a show, but I will be playing, I think. Um, very much looking forward to that, though. Nice. So make sure uh, you sneak into Chloe's friend's wedding and <laughs> go see her play. It's going to be cool. <laughs> and book her when she's back in town. Yes, please. Uh, but yeah, where can people find your music like online and everything? Um, it is on Apple music, iTunes, uh, Spotify, SoundCloud. I've been meaning to put it on Bandcamp, uh, but I haven't yet, but I should. And I think that's it. I think it's on like Amazon. Mm. If anyone out there, the three people... Using Amazon Music. It's, it's my dad. <laughs> okay, well, they matter too. <laughs> they count too. There's a reason why it exists, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, is there anywhere people should follow you on social media or anything? Yep, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Should I say what my handles yes. are? Um, I'm on Twitter at Chloe um, Jacob Saab a B instead of an N and my Instagram is Oxford underscore underscore mama. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. People can follow at shuttlecock mag on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Visit shuttlecockmusic.com for all the articles and everything. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Uh, we are on YouTube and also Apple podcasts and Spotify and Leave a rating and review if you'd like. Share your favorite episodes on social media. We also have the web store, um, shellcockmag.bigcartel.com. We have t-shirts, photozines, and buttons. Uh, also look out for some shows we have booked coming up in March. And I think that's all I have. I appreciate you being on the show today. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Of course. <laughs>